Hi friends, this is Nitesh, founder of Stockmark. Today in this video, we are going to talk about three important things. The first, the new classic feature called Journey with many examples. The second, the individual contribution of each leg feature. And the third most important is how to read the backtested results effectively and properly. So first of all, let's start with the Journey feature for which you all are here for. And uh, let me sh actually share an idea with you that why this feature came into existence. Let me do the screen sharing first. So the idea is, I hope you already know about the classic re-execute feature, which is if I, let's say, click on short CP hundred, what does it mean? It means that I want to short the call nearest to hundred rupees. I want to short the put closest to hundred rupees. And let's say if I want to re-execute, what does re-execute means? Let me click here, re-execute two times. Let me click here, re-execute two times. What is the logic of re-execute? I'm sure you all must be aware of it. The re-execute says that if any of a leg SL gets triggered at any point in time, then the very next minute open, I want to execute this logic again. That's why it is called re-execute. It means execute your logic again. Now, what's the logic? The logic is I want to short the closest premium 100 rupees again. It is irrespective of what the strike I've gotten earlier. It doesn't matter. It means that the next minute open, I want to execute this logic again. So for example, let's say at 1030, your stop loss of 25% got triggered at 1030, any second, 1030, 45 seconds, whatever. So the next minute open, it means at exactly 103100, I will again look at option chain and see which is closest to 100 rupees call. It means this is my logic and I want to execute this logic again. And I will then at 1031 execute this logic. If my SL again got triggered, since I have to re-execute second time as well, I'll again look at the option chain the next minute open and I'll execute this logic again. That's why it is called re-execute your logic. But there is one limitation in this feature, which is I'm actually executing the logic the same logic again and again and again. So one of our users said that, what if I want to short the call initially, but if my SLE gets triggered, I now want to short the closest premium 50 rupees. Or let's say I want to buy, because I know the direction is uptrend, I want to buy the call now. Is there any logic to execute the different logic rather than the same logic? We said no, but let's create a feature around. So re-execute, what it does is it will execute the logic, same logic again and again. But now the journey feature which you have made allows you to execute the different logic after your SL or TP gets triggered. So let me uh, share what I'm exactly talking about. So let's say if I have short, let's say if I have ATM call, which I have shorted. Now, if the ATM call SL gets triggered, I don't want to execute the same logic. Rather, I want to give users the flexibility to choose what do they want to do. So assumingly, I've shorted ATM call. And if the stop loss gets triggered, it means probably the market is in the up direction. So if the market is in the up direction, I can either short the put now. So for example, I want to short ATM put here because my stop loss got triggered or somebody can also say why, why just short? I can probably go ATM call buying side of or probably some would say I want to short the put, but why to be at the ATM since my SL for call gets triggered and market may reverse or anything can happen. Why not just go for closest premium 50 rupees, which is like a little OTM side of stuff. Stuff People like closest premium feature. Some people like OTM feature. So somebody can say ATM minus 300 put, which is like OTM, 3 lakhs OTM in Bank Nifty. So now giving this flexibility to user is what was our target. So let's take an example one by one. Let's say somebody says, I want to short the ATM put. 
my ATM stop loss gets triggered. The ATM call stop loss gets triggered. Now I want to short ATM put. Now if somebody says that, okay, if my SL for put again gets triggered, what do I want to do? And now they'll say, uh, my put stop loss got triggered. I'll again enter into the call side. But now this time I'll be very much OTM. So they'll say CP50 for the call. I want to short it again. They say, okay, if this stop loss also gets triggered, do you want to do anything or not? They'll say, okay, let me try a very far OTM CP25 put short. We'll again ask if the stop loss gets triggered, do you want to do anything? They'll say, no, this time I don't want to do anything. So while thinking this feature through, I have discussed with one of my friends called Sanit Dev. His name is Sanit Dev. So he said that yeah, rather than calling this a smart re-execute, since you are creating a journey of stop losses, so as you can see, this stop loss journey is being created. So why not call it a journey? So that's why we decided let's call it journey because we are actually asking users that what next you want to do. So we are creating a journey of stop losses. So it's not just about stop loss. It's more about anything, stop loss or target profit. So let's say if somebody has target profit as well in here, let's say they have 60% SL, my favorite SL. And let's say they have 40% TP. So if they have also entered target profit, we will ask them that what do they want to do? So let's say they have target profit in picture. Now, if my call stop, if my call target profit gets triggered, it means I am thinking in the right direction. My shorting of a call is in the right direction. So right now I'll repeat this logic. So let's say I'll short my ATM call again, but this time with a tighter stop loss because I've already gained the target profit. I don't want to lose my profit here. So probably I have 25% SL here and uh, no target profit as of now, for example. Now, if my stop loss for this gets triggered, do I want to do anything else? No, I've already achieved something. I don't want to do anything. So this whole idea of asking users what to do next if the stop loss or target profit gets triggered is called the journey. It's stop loss journey and the target profit journey. So this internally, we are calling this main leg and this whatever is going in this thing, we are calling each of these legs as child legs internally that helps us better. So this whole idea of what we are creating, this stop loss journey, which we have created, this target profit journey, which we have created, thought that this is a complex UI that how to actually present it to the user that they get very, very comfortable with it. And then that's what took us, took us so long. And we decided that since we are creating this thing in a way, exactly as you are seeing here, why not also present it to the user so that they are very comfortable with it. So let me show it how we actually made it. And I'm sure you will appreciate the user experience of it. So, so let's say I create a short straddle. Okay. I hope you can see the screen. So let me create a short straddle. So now from now onwards, you will see a new plus journey along with your other features with each leg. So this is like once clicking on it, the journey gets activated. So what does it say that I want to short an ATM call? I want to short an ATM port with 25% SL, by the way, let's do it 60% SL for time being. Okay. I'm just liking 60%. I don't know why. So if I click on journey, it will see if this leg has stop loss or target profit. If it, if this leg has stop loss or target profit, it will create a journey next to it. So it will say the journey started SL. What do you want to do? By default, it says stop. Stop means I want to do nothing. But no, no, I want to do something. If the call, if the put stop loss gets triggered, I want to now execute the call. So I'll click on it. I'll say add leg. What is add leg? It means you want to create a new leg out of it. So as soon as you click new leg, it will create L1 hyphen one. It means it's a child leg. One L1 means main leg hyphen one means first child leg. So L1 hyphen one is here on the right side itself. So what do you want to do now? You want to short the call. So change it, click on it. You will short the call. And what does it say? If the put stop loss gets triggered, I want to execute L11. L11 is, I want to short ATM call with probably tighter SL, 25% SL. Now, since this leg also has stop loss, the journey for stop loss is also created. Do you want to do anything? If the call stop loss gets triggered, I'll say, okay, I'll execute something else as well. I'll now execute put, but I don't want to be on the ATM side of it. So let me change it to closest premium. So if you click on it, closest premium, you'll say, Let's say I want to short 
50 rupees. So if the 50 rupees closes premium put with a very tight SL of probably, let's say 25%, I want to do this thing. Now this SL also is here. Do you want to do anything with this? I'll say, okay, let's stop till here. Let's only do, if the put stop loss gets triggered, I'll execute call ATM. The call ATM gets triggered. I want to execute closes premium 50. Let's do the same thing here with the call. So if the call stop loss gets triggered, I want to execute put with a little tighter SL. If the stop loss for L2 one gets triggered, so I hope you, this is clear. So L2 stop loss gets triggered. I want to execute L2 one. If L2 one stop loss gets triggered, I want to execute L2 two, which is something else. I will change it to closest premium. I'll do 50 rupees call with the tighter SL. Let's make the time 922 and let's make it 15, uh, 15 for example. Okay. So let's back test it for two years and let's see the results. Uh, I, I don't prefer back testing on Fridays. So let's move Fridays. Here. So you will see the results here. You will see the reporting here. I'll walk you through everything here, but okay, let's show it here right away. This is a new feature. I am also talking about individual like contribution. I'll come to it later. Okay. So let's see how the results actually shows. If I scroll on the right side, you will see the put SL. The first leg is main leg. The ATM put gets triggered. Now it's stop loss or target profit. Nothing got triggered. So how do you know if the stop loss or target profit got triggered? If it's either in the red, it means stop loss. If it's in the green, the tar target profit got it. If it's in the white side of it, it means <clears throat> nothing got triggered. No SL, no TP. So since no SL, no TP got triggered, the first RE1 means the first time it got re-executed. The first project that re-executes, nothing happens. So if you see 0 minus 0, it means that didn't get triggered. It didn't get a chance to trigger. So since the first SL never get, got triggered, put... The put SL didn't get triggered, so the call never got the chance. So let's see the next thing. In the second leg as well, you will see the call SL didn't get triggered. It's neither red like below nor green. So the child legs never participated in this. Only male legs were participating. So let's see the previous day. By the way, I'm sure you know that if you click on the date, you will see the entire journey for that day. That how my uh, prop PNL was the entire day. Okay, so let's see the, let's probably see this date, 10th of June this so okay so at 10 one candle 10 zero one candle it means 50,100 put I was shorting ATM it means 50,100 was there based on the spot the spot was 50,108 at that time so it picked up ATM 50,100 put at the entry price of 444 rupees so this was my entry price since it is red it means your stop loss got triggered at 10 zero one candle at 10, not exactly at 10.01, it is 10.01 candle. It means at 10.01, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, whenever. And your stop loss of 60% got triggered. So this is the exit price. This is your loss. And this is your PNL. So if the 10.01 candle SL got triggered exactly at 10.02, 10.0200, we executed L1.1, the first child leg. One cross S means this is one lot selling. We just want to be very clear that user understands this. We executed L1.1. What was 1.1? If you remember, I want to short the call. So I shorted call at 10.02. So at 10.02, this was the ADM. This is the price we got. This is the exit price. Since this is in red, it means the SL got triggered at 10, 10 candle. Now, again, if the SL got triggered, you remember, I want to short the put, but this time closes to 50 rupees, not the ATM one. So at 10, 11, I shorted the put. I hope this is clear. I shorted the put, which is closest to 50 rupees. So 48,400 put was closest to 50 rupees. What was the price? 53.03 at that time. Now this SL also got triggered, but now I know that after second child leg, I, I want to do nothing. So nothing happens after this, as you can see, one re-execute second, but we don't have one re-execute third. One means the first main leg. They execute second child leg. That's what it is. So let's go to the second main leg. What is the second main leg? This is ATM call. So here I shorted the ATM call at ATM, but 
since it's white, it means no stop loss got triggered. It just exited at your its exit time at 315. So this is this is how you read it. This is how you read the backtest results. After this and end of it, I will also demonstrate it to you that how to use this show individual like contribution. Okay, I, I'll just show it to you right now. Probably you will get an idea of it. If you click on it, it actually shows you that each leg, how each leg contributed. So actually how this idea was shared by one of our users who said that yaar, I am executing the child legs, main leg, short call, short put, and the child legs as well. Then how do I know that child leg contributed to my entire PNL? How much it contributed to my entire PNL? And am I going in the right direction? Do I want to short the call or do I want to go long on the call? Can you exactly show me the PNL of that leg? So that's where it strike does that. Yeah, let's give this as a feature for everything, not just journey. And once you click on it, show individual leg contribution, you can see that above each leg, this is a main leg. Now this contributed to 62,488, which is roughly 40% of your entire PNL. The first leg, the first child leg contributed to 27%. And the second child leg actually didn't contribute much. So this is like 1% loss. So many people will think that if this is not contributing, I'll probably change it. Similarly, N2 contributed 18%. Main leg, the first child leg contributed 15%. The third child leg just contributed roughly 2%. This is what individual... So if you understand this thing that individual contribution of each leg properly... You can, using this number, find or rather change the strategies above in a better way. So, for example, the second leg is not contributing much. So, what I can say is, the second leg, probably I can change it so that it also starts contributing in my profit. I'll show you some examples. I've already prepared some examples. So, somebody can say, I want to rather go buying side of a call. Yeah, let's say buying side of a call. Buying side of a put here. Okay, if the, this SL gets triggered, I want to go buying side of the put. I want to have 40% SL into the picture. Okay. And uh, I don't know, will it help or not? Let's back this for the last two years again and see if this started contributing to my journey or not. I'll remove Fridays. I don't like it on this thing. And let's show individual like contribution. I'll go here. I'll say, no, this actually has taken away my money minus 2%. And this minus 0.5% here as well. So obviously, this thing is not right for the child legs. You can see this in this direction as well. I hope I'm making sense. There are many other information as well. Let me show it to you. The total legs, the total entries were 394. And the SL hit were 139 times. This is the main leg. So it means 394 minus 139 is the number of times your SL didn't get triggered. And this is the entire profit of the leg. Okay. So let's go to the first re-execute part of it. Total entry is 394. Obviously, this will be same for the entire thing. SL hit were 74 times. It means out of 394 times, it got the chance. 74 times only SL got triggered. No entry, 255 times. What do you mean by no entry? That means the first leg, SL or TP didn't get triggered and I got no chance to enter. No re-entry. No re-entry means 0 minus 0. Whenever you see 0 minus 0, it means it didn't get the chance to enter. So, previous one SL or TP didn't get triggered. So out of 394, 255 times, no entries. And 394 minus 255, whatever the number is, out of that 74 times the SL got triggered. And this contributed to 22,000 rupees profit. So I'm just giving you a hint. Our beta users actually use this feature extensively to find or rather create a strategy that is giving rather decent profits to them. I hope this hint is more than enough. So let's move it. Let's come again upstairs. Okay. Let me give you a simple thing here. Let's say I remove it. I just remove it. If you remove, it will remove the journey for that. Okay. Let me tell you something. Since you can reuse the logic, let's say this L1 is, I want to short the ATM put at 60% SL. And uh, rather than creating a new leg, I can say I want to re-execute L1 here. It means that if the SL gets triggered, I want to execute the L1 again. If it's SL gets triggered, I want to execute L1 again. Here, if I do the same thing, L2 again, L2 again, what does it mean? If the SL gets triggered, I want to execute the same logic L1. If the L1 SL again gets triggered, I want to execute the L1 again. So this is nothing 
but exactly same as re-execute two times. But re-execute does this, it executes the same logic again. So I hope this is now clear. So this entire thing is same as re-executing the entire leg, re-executing the leg two times because I'm executing the same logic again. You can probably uh, open the different tabs, run the re-execute two times, run the L1 two times, L2 two times, you will understand it much better. Okay. I hope this is clear. Uh, one more thing, the results that I have shown you is based on the settings that I have done. So probably you will not see the same results because there is a change lot settings here. So I am using bank nifty lot size as 15 throughout. It means my entire back testing will use 15. Some people I have seen use 20 till the last change of the lot size with 20, 20 July, 23 and 15 after that. So if you have lot sizes different, then probably you will see the different results. We show what lot size we have used for each date here, bank nifty lot size. Okay. And the, uh, I'll also show you after the examples that how to read the effective, uh, the back testing results. Okay. Let's come to some examples. I'll not probably this video will get longer. I'll probably show just some of the examples to you. Let's see. Let's say journey test. Let's say I do DT zero DT one two. What does it mean? So I want to short the ATM call 25% SL. If the SL gets figured, I want to execute L11. What is L11? Closest premium greater than or equal to 50 rupees. Good. At 25% SL. If this SL gets figured, I want to execute L12. What is L12? Again, greater than or equal to 50, but this time call side. 25% SL. If this SL gets figured, L12, I want to execute L13. L13 is rather you know, conservative. CP greater than or equal to 25, not 50 this time. Put. 50% uh, SL, you can change it to two, three, whatever lot sizes. Okay. But if this SL gets triggered, I want to just stop. I want to do nothing now. I want to just participate in the market three times maximum. First SL, second SL, third SL. Okay. The same thing is here. L21, L22, L23. The time is 922. It's not a, you know, you can find some good time. 919, 922, 957. There are many times out there. So again, the last buy. So ATM call, 25% SL. L11, I want to execute, get than equal to 50. Uh, if you want, I can also share the links of some of the strategies here in this YouTube channel. Now, if now this is good, this is the buying side of it. So the, if the ADM call gets triggered, I want to execute the closest premium 50, but with 25% SL. If L11 SL gets triggered, I want to execute L12, which means if this SL gets triggered, put SL gets triggered, I want to be on the put side, but I want to be on the buying side of it right now. So I just buy it with the 25% SL or something. So this is J not bad. J means journey. So this is also same thing. L11, L12. Here in the buying side, I've also executed like 40% SL. So let me show you one Sensex strategy. So Sensex is also similar. In this, I have just taken an example of ATM only, no closest premium. ATM call 60% SL. If the SL gets triggered, I want to execute L11 which is 25% SL ATM. And next time I want to be on the buying side of it with target profit, 40% and 25%. Let's run it. Let's see. Okay. So, so if we run the strategy only on the zero to one DT, let's change it to DT. If you don't know about this feature, this is very good feature. DT means days to expiry zero, zero DT means on expiry day. One DT means one day before expiry. So if I run this strategy, this is a decent profit, a very good expectancy, win percentage is good. You will see this uh, 35% monthly profits. This is good. Okay. And uh, you will see the February was very good. One double nine, double nine as a profit. So by the way, I'm sure you must have played around this thing. You can change the dates from here, sort the dates, sort the profits. So if you want to see all the profit dates first. You can see from here sorting and uh, this, yeah, you can see this thing. Okay. Play around with it. So if you see the green thing, green means the target profit actually got the target got hit. Red means the stop loss got triggered. White means no SL, no TP. If zero minus zero, it means it, it never participated in this. Thing. So I hope I've already shown you much of this thing. Uh, some of the examples I'll also demonstrate. I'll share the examples here. Okay. Now let's come to how to read the back testing results. Let's take this example only. Okay. So the first thing is the date. Obviously, if you click on it, 
since you only get to know the end of the day PNL, which is 2510, if I want to know it, how the PNL actually went through the entire day, you just click on it. It will show you that this minute, this was the PNL, this minute, this was the PNL against the spot. The entire day you can see it. Okay. What's the second line? The second line is what day it was. This was Friday. Zero DT means it was zero days to expiry. What was the expiry date? 14 June. So you'll see the 14 June if you are checking. This is zero DT. If 13 June, this is one day to expiry. This is our profit, the lot size that we have considered based on the settings above. Okay, since six lot size, this is the maximum profit and the maximum loss throughout the day. By the way, if you guys already are aware of the back testing results, how to read it, you can skip this part, but uh, I'll just show you the way I read it. Maximum profit loss means the maximum profit of the loss that I have taken on this. India VIX on the start of my time strategy time and the exit of my strategy time sensex gap up gap down it means whether this day was a gap up day so this says that this is like if, if i read this so this is that this is 538.89.9 above the market opened 530 points above which is 0.7.7 percent more than the previous day this says that if the day open has actually broken the previous day high low or not, yes, the day open is more than previous day high or low. If this is hyphen, it means it was between previous day high or previous day low. This is very important to understand spot change. The spot change means when my strategy entered, which is at 922. And when my strategy exited, let's say my strategy exited at 315. This is that price. Now, this doesn't include the high and low of my strategy entered and my strategy exited. What was the high low made? No, this is just at the entry time. My what was my strategy spot when my strategy exited? What was the spot at that time? This I've already shown, told you that how to read it. So let's say this is ATM. So it was 75,202 rupees, uh, the spot price. So the ATM would be 75,200 call. This is my entry price that this was the price of 75,200 call when I entered at 922 and minus this means this is my exit price. So this is red. This means the stop loss got triggered off 60% and I lost 216 points. So 216 points into the Sensex lot size multiplied by 10. This is the PNL. I, my stop loss got triggered. So whenever you see the time at the end, that means the stop loss or target profit got triggered. So this 959 candle, my stop loss got triggered. So exactly the next minute, which is like 10 0 0. My next entry got started and I got an entry at L1.1, the first child leg, the one lot short minus one cross. It means one lot short. If you see two cross B, it means two lot buy. one cross B means one lot buy. This is my entry price of the next, this thing at 10 o'clock. You can also verify that. And, uh, this is red, which means my stop loss got triggered. So you can click on the individual sub like contribution. You will see this thing. Okay. So many people also ask us just last thing. Many people also ask us that if I want to see a particular month, let's say I want to see just February data. How do I exactly get to that? So you can use this search filter here. So you can this in this search filter, there are two things that you can do. One, you can either just search from the day. Let's say I want to just use Thursday. So if you enter Thursday, only Thursday data will show up. That will help you to filter and evaluate the results much, much faster. Somebody wants to just say, I, okay, I want to just evaluate Wednesdays. It will just evaluate Wednesdays, the Fridays. It will just evaluate Fridays. And you can also search through a date. So for example, if I want to search only, let's say 2023 year, so I'll just add 2023. So all the dates for 2023 gets filtered. If I want to just, uh, evaluate only 2024 year filter. So I'll just do 2024. This will search through year. Now, if you want to search through, let's say February, 2024. So I'll add 2024 hyphen 02. 02 two means February. So only February data shows up here. Or if you want to go to a particular date, let's say 10th February or 11th February or 12th, whatever is here. 16th February, sorry. Yeah, 16th February. You can see that here. Okay, by the way, uh, yeah, this is because we are only doing zero DT, one DT. That's why some data are not showing up. Dates are not showing up. Okay. So I hope this is better. You can definitely use this 
to filter or evaluate the results better. Obviously, all the sortings are already in place. If you click on it, sorting gets here and the dates filters, anything. Just, just play around with this feature and see uh, if it's really helpful. I'll also let me see if I've skipped anything. Individual like contribution date 10 left and ha. Huh. This is just one more thing. Some people feel uh, because I have a larger screen, some people have a smaller screen and they see uh, the data is not coming properly. You can use this feature. You click on it, it will collapse. Click on it, it will expand. You can probably just in the entire screen use the results. I hope this is clear. This video is already getting longer. Thank you so much. Use this feature a lot. Uh, this will help you diversify the strategy. If not the exact strategy, use this in basket with other strategies. Probably your results will get better. All the best. Thank you so much. Do share your feedback with us. Bye-bye.